next speaker, David McNally, has enjoyed an extensive international business career, including assignments in South Africa, Europe, and the South Pacific. He is the producer of an award-winning production, The Power of Purpose, and an executive producer of a recently released inspirational film, If I Were Brave. David is the author of another best-selling book, You Eagles Need a Push, Learning to Soar in a Changing World. And today, we will hear his compelling message. So please join me in welcoming our special guest speaker, Mr. David McNally. Thank you, Amy. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I heard the energy a little earlier. It was absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. You know, you get a lovely introduction like that, and I, I must say to you, there was just one little piece missing, if I, I may share, uh, something that happened to me in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, a couple of years ago. I was speaking to a group nowhere near as big as this, about 100 people, and I was five minutes into my presentation when a man put his hand up and he said, stop. Now, even if you give a lot of presentations, that's a very intimidating thing to have happen to you, right? But I had to stop, and uh, I said, yes, sir, what can I do for you? He said, well, I've been listening to you, to you for five minutes, but I haven't heard a word that you've said. I said, what's the problem? He said, I'm trying to figure out where are you from? So I gathered he was listening to the way I spoke rather than the message I was trying to communicate and reminded me of when I moved to Minneapolis, St. Paul is where I now live. And I've lived there for 25 years. You could probably tell I'm not originally from the Twin Cities, you know. I'm actually from Duluth. No, no, no. Um, however, no, but you know when you come from another country you do have an expectation. And that is the place to which you're moving will at least know where your country is. Well, I found out in the Midwest back in 1980, that was not necessarily true. Uh, my wife was in a gas station, a little place we lived west of the Twin Cities called Excelsior, Minnesota. A woman was pumping gas and she was listening to my wife speak and she said, well, obviously you're not from these parts. And my wife said, no, we're not. The woman said, well, where are you from? My wife says, Australia. Well, then there was this long pause and the woman said, well, that's fantastic. She said, but tell me, where did you learn to speak English so well? So uh, Crocodile Dundee did a great deal for Australia. <laughs> so the context, however, comes from a luncheon that I actually had with a client of mine uh, a few years ago, a large financial services company. And the VP said to me, he said, listen, um, I want to tell you something, David. We're not bringing you in here to help us to survive. He said, we're bringing you in here to help us to thrive. He said, you understand the difference between those two things? And I said, well, I think I do, but can you just maybe embellish it a little bit for me? He said, well, you know, I've been reading a lot of business books recently and these magazines, and they're all saying big headlines to survive in business today. This is what you have to do. He said, speakers like you get up there and you talk about your 10 rules for surviving in business today. And he said, there was something that wasn't quite resonating with me. He said, and I couldn't figure out what it was. He said, so, but I remember that a few years ago that you said to us, remember that language is the software of the mind. Be careful of your language. He said, so I looked at that statement and I realized it was the word survive that bothered me. He said, so I went to the dictionary to see exactly what it meant. And David, there were three words attached to the word survive. Survive, to not die. That was it. They said, well, I know that's a very heroic thing at times. Let's face it, we all go through life's challenges. We have crises. We have international crises. We have all of the things that happen that put people into a survival mode. He said, but I don't think that people survive because they want to survive. He said, I think they survive because ultimately they want to thrive. He said, and David, when I went to the dictionary to see how it defined thrive, here's what it said, to flourish, to grow, and to prosper. He said, so shouldn't we be talking about this is what we've got to do to thrive in business today? Well, I went home that particular night and I was thinking about that distinction and I said, that's fascinating distinction. And I'd been looking for an idea for a new book. And, uh, and so I was, I was reflecting on the distinction. I couldn't help but think about situations where you have people 
who are born into the most abundant opportunity and circumstances. It's all around them from the day they were born, and they still find ways just to survive. And there are those people who are born into the most adverse circumstances, and they find ways to thrive. What are the differences between those two groups of people? Well, I decided that I would make that the basis for a new book, and so we did a study, 600 different organizations in the business world, in the not-for-profit community, in the educational sec sector, and what we wanted to do is we wanted people to share with us people in their organizations who were thriving, and to tell us why they were thriving. And we were particularly looking for them to share with us the attitudes and behaviors that these people exhibited. Why? Because simply put, our basic philosophy is the way we think and the way that we act is the way we create our lives. So we broke down all the feedback that we got into certain themes. Here's the first one. Thrivers constantly reinvent themselves. They are mentally agile and willing to risk. That's wonderful. You've heard that in a different way. But what does that mean on a daily basis? Survivors focus on people as ordinary. Thrivers see people as extraordinary. Survivors focus on limitations. Thrivers on great expectations. Survivors focus on meeting standards. Thrivers focus on setting the standards. Survivors focus on making excuses. Thrivers on making commitments. Survivors focus on getting through. Thrivers on breaking through. Survivors focus on hiding out. Thrivers focus on shining out. When you act from a sense of purpose, you operate from a totally different level. Now, you and I know how important it is to be motivated. You are already a highly motivated group of people. But I want to take you way beyond motivation today. Because, you know, motivation leaves open a couple of possibilities. One of them is possible to be motivated to do nothing. You see, you cannot be inspired to do nothing. The very word itself means to move forward with purpose and enthusiasm. Purpose means clarity of intention. I am real clear about why I do what I do. Enthusiasm comes from the Greek entheos, the spirit within. You take clarity of intention, you propel it by spirit within, you have the most potent combination known to humankind. Peter Drucker, who we lost recently, the great management guru, called those people maniacs with a mission. But I asked you to think about your life beyond Abbott, for your whole life. Who inspires you? Well, if you went into the lobby of this hotel, you had a little clipboard, and all you asked people coming through the front door was, what is the purpose of a business? What do you think they would say? Make money. I mean, that's what a business is about. It's all about making money. Well, here's what I discovered, and I want you really to think about this. I realized that the purpose of a business is not to make money. Remember I said that earlier on that language is the software of the mind. Be careful of your language. Here's why I know that the purpose of a business is not to make money. I have a second cousin in England, this is a true story, who spent 10 years in prison for making money. Now, the police force over there said, this is the best stuff we've ever seen. But unfortunately, there, the Bank of England reserves the right to make all the money. <laughs> all right. When Wall Street, the Wall Street Journal reports on how Abbott did last year, does it report on its makings? No, it reports on its earnings. Ah, so in other words, money is something that is earned. And what is it earned first and foremost by? Well, here's what Ted Levitt uh, uh, from the Marketing Imagination said. I love it. That the purpose of a business is to create and keep customers. Why? Because without customers, nothing else is possible. 